What's up guys? Uh, I'm here today just filming a little video about my 20 valve silver top Corolla here right behind me and uh, we've been having some weird weird issues with the ECU uh, specifically random check engine lights and, and it not pulling properly and the engine cutting out at about 4,000 RPMs. We tested everything mechanically and sensors and whatnot and there's nothing wrong with it from that perspective. So the only the only uh, logical conclusion at this point is the ECU. So uh, I already pulled the ECU and I've already had it repaired and basically I'm just gonna go through how we fixed it and um, yeah that's about it really. Oh random cat, Ran ah, doesn't matter. Okay so let's cue the video of what the hell's wrong with the car. Okay, I'm just videotaping my weird issue. Here we are, third gear, pull, 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 pulling hard, pulling hard, dead. Cannot get beyond 4,000 RPM. Won't even accept my throttle. Full throttle, nothing. I let it fall. Uh, that time it's not revving, uh, it's not revving again. Earlier it was allowing me to rev to seven grand in neutral. Here we go again. Pull, 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 pull. Dead at four. I won't even accept my throttle. Hang on one second. Okay, this is the first test of the engine after the ECU repair. Let's see how this goes. Starts up just right. She's idling okay. That's about right for idle, actually. Mine's always idled about 1500, so that's good so far. We're not going to really know until she warms up a little bit. We'll come back in a few minutes. Okay, now the car is all warmed up. Um, just demonstrating here. No revving problems there. No revving problems at all. Uh, let's take it for a quick spin just to demonstrate that now everything is working properly. Um, we'll come back in a second. You get the picture, I'm doing over the speed limit, so I'm not going to keep filming this because I don't want to get in shit. But you get the picture, it's running fine. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna head home and I'll pull the ECU and I'll show you what's been fixed so you can get an idea of what the problem was. So hang tight. Okay, we're taking a look here at the Silvertop ECU after it's been repaired. Um, let me just open it up, I already removed all the screws. What was actually fixed was these little capacitors here and uh, what I didn't know originally but I know now is that the capacitors are only meant to last maybe five to ten years and um, after that time they start leaking sometimes they bulge at the top and sometimes they leak from the bottom so in my case what had happened was right here I'll try to get this to focus it's kinda of blurry right here you can see the traces here are darker see everywhere else these traces are light green but here you can see they're darker now they've all been cleaned and scrubbed clean um, but originally um, what had happened was the capacitor fluid inside these had leaked out onto the board here and was causing interference um, with the signals being sent um, through the through the computer so in my case if, if I trace the line on this trace, it actually runs all the way down to this pin down here, which you may or may not be able to see. It says VVT right there. And VVT kicks in around 4,000 RPM. It just happened that at 4,000 RPM uh, was where we were having the issue. So coincidence? I don't think so. So we've replaced all the capacitors, and and you could you could just open the ECU and try to scrub the traces, and maybe you could get it the car to start running again properly but that's not a long-term solution because the capacitors will leak again so 
we um, we removed all the old capacitors and they're here here's one here there's a whole bunch of them here actually all the old capacitors have been removed and new ones have been installed in all the spots there's seven in total one two three four five and two here so those seven capacitors have all been replaced so there's no danger in the near future of them leaking out and contaminating the board again the fluid inside these capacitors is is conductive so if they leak across multiple traces and and because the fluid is acidic it can it can cause two traces to conduct with each other so that was the issue it's been fixed all the capacitors have been replaced um, and because um, we replaced them all there's no risk in the near future or probably in this car's lifetime of them leaking again so yeah that's that's pretty much how we fixed it um, the symptoms for me were we were we were unable to get the car to run properly I, idle was poor I think it was idling at like 600 rpm once it was warmed up it idled at like 1200 until the car warmed up once it warmed up uh, idle dropped to 600 and we couldn't rev past 4000 rpm which is right when VVT kicks in <laughs> kicks in anyways um uh, what else is there to cover really trying to think if there's anything else I really need to cover here not really I don't think so oh there was also a piece of the board you can see it right there a little bit of jagginess that's because this capacitor had leaked so much of the acidic fluid had actually started to eat the board right there in that bottom corner there um, so if you don't replace the capacitors they could they could potentially eventually um, just ruin the board completely but we've we've saved it before that could happen um, also the acid could potentially eat the traces to the point where even cleaning the traces and replacing capacitors could not do the job but in that case you can always repair the traces with a with a special pen or you can run a wire that will uh, join the two points that the tracers the traces run from and to so that is pretty much it um, it, this is not something a novice should probably attempt uh, at least at least you should practice before you attempt it uh, but if someone needs help I do know a guy who can do it um, you can contact me through YouTube and then we can coordinate something where we can repair your ECU because I know these ECUs are getting expensive in price uh, I know that this particular one this is a silver top 20 valve ECU uh, they sell on, on eBay for two hundred fifty dollars or more. This is a this was a cheap cheap fix uh, that's gonna make this ECU last for a long time and nowhere near two hundred fifty dollars. And the price I'm guessing is gonna keep going up as time goes on. So for the ECU to buy on eBay, I mean. Um, so that's it, really. The, replacing the capacitors, cleaning the traces, did the job. And like I said, you could potentially just pull the ECU and clean all the traces where where um, the acidic fluid inside the capacitors had leaked out and that might fix it short term but of course the capacitors will leak again and you'll have the same problem again so that's it uh, yeah so you can contact me through YouTube um, private message if you need any help with this otherwise uh, yeah that's all thanks